Hi, and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. I'm joined this week by Terry Arco, and we're going to talk about a variety of different subjects, from TDS, the high cyanuric acid, to liquid chlorine, of course, since, of course, he works for Hassa. We're also going to talk about vampires and Bob Lowry. And I did say vampires, so you'll want to definitely tune into that particular podcast episode. We're going to start off talking about TDS and the drought and how that affects the chemistry in a swimming pool, how it affects a lot of different factors. And on the West Coast, we're experiencing our third year of drought. So we'll give you some insights on how to deal with pools with high TDS and, of course, balancing that with the drought situation in the West. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Also receive priority service, enhanced rebate programs, a discount on your general liability insurance through SPA, a discount on your pool riding software through Skimmer, and an opportunity to co-brand with Leslie's on your social media, website, truck, and more. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. So I'm joined today by Terry Arco of Hassa, who is the technical training manager. How are you doing, Terry? Well, I'm doing great, David. Yeah, it's been a while. I think I saw you at the Western Show. That was the last time we actually spoke in person. Yeah, briefly, because that was a very busy show. <laughs> yeah, it was surprisingly very busy and a good turnout, which is really impressive for it was during the, I would say, the peak of the third, fourth wave of COVID. I, I'm losing track of the waves here. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, turnout was fantastic at that, though. So let's just jump right in here. And since you have a lot of industry knowledge from working at Hasa, but also being in an industry pretty much a better part of your life, one of the things that's happening in the West now is that we're experiencing the third year of drought, as the media is saying. I, I don't think it, it has never really ended. I mean, we've always had drought years and there was a brief rain period. But the drought is something that's been part of the West Coast for probably the last decade, I would say. One thing is people are resistant to draining their pools because of this fact, and they want to be conscious of the environment and don't want to incur the cost of refilling their pool. But the side effect of that, of course, is that the TDS level, of course, is high in pools. So how do you how do you work around that? And can you explain the TDS for the listeners that may not know what that actually means? Sure. Um, yeah, I'll start first with um, TDS and just uh, briefly explaining that uh, that has to do with I, – I usually, when I teach water chemistry, I, I just call it the big, the big picture because it's basically uh, has to do with everything uh, that has gone on in that pool water for the life of that pool water. So that means, you know, it, it, there's byproducts of every, probably every chemical you've ever added, and particularly um, uh, sodium, sodium-based, calcium-based, uh, alkaline-based products are going to accumulate. And then you've just got, you know, from, from swimmer use, you know, uh, sunscreens, those kinds of things um, that are coming off of swimmers, environmental, anything environmental that's gone in there, dirts and pollens, and, and uh, then you've got, you know, metals and all, all sorts of things. Those, those all sort of agglomerate over time. And water has a certain saturation uh, ability to where it's able to, uh, up to a certain point, it can, it can dissolve and absorb a lot of these things. Um, but it reaches a peak, and when it gets to that peak uh, to where it's oversaturated, uh, then things uh, aren't able to be dissolved. That's where you actually see what we call total dissolved solids. It begins to get harder and harder for the pool to do it, uh, water to do its work. So you see things like scale build up. You see cloudy water. Uh, chemicals don't work as well. That's probably one of the biggest factors with TDS is that if you're 1,500 parts per million over what your source water is, you begin to lose effectiveness of chlorine, and it can be up to 50% of your chlorine that just isn't as effective because it can't penetrate uh, because the water has so much solid in it. 
TDS, I would say probably two of the biggest factors, and, and we bring drought into this because obviously during a drought time, typically in Southern California, for example, when it's hot and it's dry, your evaporation rate uh, has increased. So that just means more water evaporates uh, faster from the pool. And when the water evaporates, only pure water is leaving. So that just means you're, you're getting, again, more of accumulation of those solids is being left behind in the pool. And so TDS will go up from that standpoint. So is there a workaround? Like, I know a lot of pool guys do this trick here, and I've, I've been guilty of it too, where the when the builder builds a pool, he leaves the hose spigot on the pump. And what we do is we just... When we're at the account, we put a garden hose on there, put our car keys, of course, on top of that uh, hose, bigot, the handle, and we just drain some water out while we're there for the 15 or 20 minutes. Does that help alleviate some of this problem or is that just not a drop in the bucket? Uh, no, actually, uh, I'm going to say if that's being done uh, proactively and if that's being done um, on a uh, you know, periodically or on a maintenance type of a schedule to where you're 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 doing that. Uh, that actually is it can be very beneficial, very very beneficial, uh, and 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 that's what I encourage, and 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 I encourage that during time of drought. And so the the thing to think about, and I think where where maybe pool pros can get concerned is, uh, you know, drought comes about, and then of course. You know, usually when there's drought restrictions, they, they usually start with, you know, maybe it's the washing the cars uh, or watering your lawns. You know, that's, that's kind of where they're going to go first. Um, but then they're going to get to the pool, too. I, and, and typically the drought restrictions with swimming pools uh, are more so directed to builders. So a lot of times what the drought restriction will be is just not allowing for pools to be built, period. Mm -hmm which is not good, not allowing for a, a new pool to be filled during a drought time, not allowing for a swimming pool to be completely drained and refilled during a drought time. But to my knowledge, there aren't drought restrictions on maintenance, uh, drain and dilution. In other mm -hmm. words, something to where what you're describing. Now, the other thing, what I would say is, uh, proactive, periodic drain and dilute is probably the best thing you can do for your pool year round mm -hmm. um, just to keep that water fresh, to keep those total dissolved solids down, um, to allow for your chemicals to work better. And, and, and actually that routine, if it's a routine, would conserve water because what that would mean is it would take you much longer or you may actually maybe never get to a, the point because you're doing that proactive drain and dilute to where you would have to drain the entire contents of the pool uh, because it's gotten scaled up from solids and you got to do the acid wash or whatever it is you have to do. And so that's actually conserving water. Uh, so I think that's a good practice. And, and uh, quite honestly, I'll tell you, um, on the public end, uh, in Europe, in the European countries, uh, there is a DIN standard. So the DIN standard is kind of, that's the same as like our Pool Hot Tub Alliance standards that we have here or, or the, um, the uh, Model Aquatic Health Code standards. They have the DIN standards in Europe and the DIN standards, in, uh, one of the DIN standards for public pools in Europe says uh, that you must do some daily, some every day, every day you're doing some drain and dilute so that by the end of the month, after a 30 day period or, or so, you've actually drained and diluted out the entire contents of the pool. Mm. And what we find actually in Europe is they don't have the recreational water illness issues that we have. They don't have the chloramine issues that we have in indoor pools. They're not having the issues of, you know, where people are, uh, you know, getting, you know, have breathing in all this heavy chlorine content and so forth because they're keeping the water quality a lot fresher by doing that. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Before the drought, I remember on my pool route, I, I would always tell customers that bought a new house and I, I've, I've been servicing the pool. I know the previous owner didn't drain it. And so what I would tell the new owner is, hey, you know, since you're going to be swimming in there with your family and you don't, you're not familiar with the pool, 
why don't we just drain the whole thing down and start with fresh water? And almost nine out of 10 times, they were like, yeah, let's just drain it. I don't want to swim in someone else's water. Psychologically, it was easier. Now, sure. the resistance now is, of course, you know, no one wants to do a full drain. Mainly, right, I don't think there's any restrictions per se yet in California for that, but it's probably coming. So the partial drain of a customer, if you approach them and say, oh, I want to drain one foot of water out of your pool to add fresh water. I think that's going to meet with less resistance, if that's the correct way. I, of. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the I, I think the other I used to be in the pool business. Um, well, I'm still in the pool business, uh, but but service. I, I was in service repair and sales and the whole thing in Southern California. And uh, we did acid washes and, and all that sort of thing. And I can always remember I, one of the other pushbacks that we would get when we'd, we'd go to somebody and say, hey, we have to drain your pool. We have to do an acid wash. Uh, you know, your water's 10 years old, whatever. Uh, and, and people, oh, my God, you know, the cost, you know, they, they'd freak out because they had this people had this somehow uh, misperception that water was, you know, like gold or just mm -hmm. so expensive. When actually uh, the contrary is true, even now water is still uh, and I'm talking municipal water. So, it, I mean, it's kind of a funny example for me to use. But uh, I think up here in Seattle where I am, um, it's it's about a little over four, four dollars, maybe four fifty for uh, for a thousand gallons of water mm -hmm. coming into your home. OK. Well, I was at the airport once and I tried to buy a bottle of water and it was five dollars for 16 <laughs> ounces. So we're not talking bottled water here. OK, we're talking uh, the municipal water. And so the rates actually over are, are still are still fairly inexpensive. Mm -hmm. So so that's something maybe you can ease the mind of your customer with uh, the one the one caveat that I'll give to that is, you know, something else to probably check that pros would want to check if you're going to do any sort of significant amount of draining of a customer's pool. This is something else you might want to have this sort of conversation with them that, uh, you know, most homes are allotted a, a certain amount of gallons of water per month from the municipality. So whatever that is, I don't know if it's, you know, 2000 gallons or, or who knows, whatever. But it's usually on the water bill, too. It tells you what your limit is. Now, if you exceed that limit in a month, typically what happens is they'll they'll bill you double. So mm -hmm. your bill is going to go up. It's going to be twice as much as it would normally be if you exceed uh, the limit. Um, so that's something to be aware of. But then again, still, uh, if you figure an average water bill maybe is, you know, I don't know, 100 bucks, it's going to be 200 bucks. I think if you're kind of ready for that or if, if you explain that to your customers, if you've got to do any you know, substantial amount of draining, it's important to kind of have that conversation just so they don't get shocked when they open their bill and they know what to expect. Yeah, and I think one or two feet of water out of the pool wouldn't be considered a drastic no. amount. No, and, and that certainly wouldn't take you over, I think, what your, what your limit mm -hmm. is. Talking would, about if you're going to do a half drain or, or, or more, mm -hmm. that, that could do it, you know. And I guess we should remind the listeners that no matter what chlorine product they're using, liquid chlorine, calhypo, trichlor tablets, they're adding to the total dissolved solids of the pool, correct? Yes, uh, that's that's absolutely true. So cyanuric acid that comes from trichlor tablets is a part of TDS. Uh, anything you're adding chemical-wise, especially any kind of dry chemical, for absolutely for sure is a part of TDS. So calhypo, the calcium that comes from calhypo, that's not only is that contributing to your calcium hardness and your, your total hardness, but that's also a part of total dissolved solids. Liquid chlorine is going to, uh, you know, the byproduct of liquid chlorine when it does its work and it converts back is uh, sodium chloride. So it's salt. Uh, now, uh, the thing is, out of all three of those, if you've got a, a, a substantial part of your total dissolved solids from calcium, uh, well, that's going to lead to your water is going to be cloudy. Uh, and that's also going to lead to scale, um, calcium carbonate scale. When you have a lot of calcium and you, there's also carbon in the water naturally, 
those two combine calcium carbonate that creates scale. So you're going to get scaling with, with cyanuric acid, the high cyanuric acid, obviously we, we know this one, we've been learning a lot about this right through the, the last few years. Uh, that's just inefficiency of your sanitizer. So the higher the CYA goes, the, the more sanitizer you're going to need to keep control of the pool. Ball. Now with liquid, with, with the salt, the one thing about it is, yeah, that increases, that is an increase of the total dissolved solids. But if it's just, if your total dissolved solids are just from sodium chloride from liquid, and there's not a lot of the other byproducts in there, that is uh, not going to create, first of all, it's not going to interfere with your disinfection. It's, it's not going to lead to cloudiness uh, of the water. So it is true that you're going to raise TDS from sodium chloride, but that's one of the least detrimental forms of TDS you can have. Um, however, that, that doesn't negate uh, the fact that you should still do some uh, routine, I guess I would say, diluting of your water, drain and dilute of the water. A little bit at a time, put some fresh in. Yeah, I, I think we should also mention that the best thing you can do as a pool pro is get a digital tester. I have one right here. I have the, uh, <laughs> the Lamont Tracer, and it does salinity and TDS and conductivity. But you should have some way of testing for TDS in the pools. And we should emphasize, too, that to get the actual reading, you have to test the tap water and then subtract what you're getting from the pool. And as a side note, if you have a saltwater pool, the TDS is going to be like 4,500 parts per million, right? It's going to be way off the charts uh, because of all the salt in there. That's right. And I'll tell you, this is a big one, you know, because I've taught water chemistry classes. I've taught commercial pool operator courses for over 25, 30 years. And it's amazing to me, even, even in my commercial pool operator classes that I teach, and we'll get to the section on TDS and testing for TDS. And it's amazing to me how many uh, service techs aren't testing for TDS, or maybe they're only testing once a year or once every few years, that not very often. Some of them don't even do it at all, and a lot aren't even aware of what TDS, TDS is per se. And uh, so I make a, a really uh, concerted effort to say that every pool pro should have a good TDS kit like that one that you showed, a good digital TDS uh, test kit. And probably the most important reason for that is, as you said, you want to test your, your source water, so your incoming water TDS. You want to know what that is, and then you want to test your pool water and know what your pool water TDS is. And as I pointed out earlier, if, if the water in your pool is 1,500 parts per million over what your source water is, so that's what the water was when it went into the pool, uh, you are going to probably have to use about 50% more chlorine sanitizer uh, than when your TDS was in the good range. I, I tell pros that if, if for any reason for you to be regularly testing TDS and to have a good TDS test kit, probably the number one is so you can save on chlorine and you can save on money. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. So if you're looking for the other podcasts in this series, you can go to my website, swimmingprolearning.com, and on the banner, click on the podcast icon. That'll take you to a drop-down list. If you go to the podcast description, I'll have the links for the other podcasts in there as well. And definitely you can subscribe to the podcast show, and that way you get the next episode emailed to you or sent to your phone or device, and you can listen to that next episode, which will be covering um, high cyanuric acid and the other subjects I mentioned will also be covered during the week. And if you're interested in my coaching program, you can learn more about that at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week and God bless. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro.